Paul says in chapter 8 of Romans, what shall we say about these things? Well, what are these things? What are we saying about it? And what in the world do they have to do with living a godly life? Well, let's jump into this new series called These Things. What's going on, everybody? This is Devin, and welcome to another episode of Application. Application is a vlog-style video where we take a few moments to look at the truths of the Word of God and find ways to apply it to our everyday life. Content can be found here on YouTube, also on our social media pages, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. It is good to see you guys. It's been a while. I've been away resting and staying away from social media as much as I can um, because, you know, I need to rest. I need to be away from things, separate myself, um, focus on family, transition, all the things that God is doing with myself and my family. And it's been great not to have to do content every week. So it is good to be back. Um, and, you know, this month, uh, I wanted to focus on something a little bit different. Um, the last few months, I've been focusing on specific things scripturally that I have aligned with things that I've seen culturally. Um, but I wanted to focus on Romans 8 um, and what it looks like to live by the Spirit. Um, you know, there's a scripture in Romans 8 that Paul says, um, what shall we say about such wonderful things, or what shall, we, what shall we say about these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And I think we so often skip to the part B of that verse, verse 31, where it says, if God be for us, who can be against us? That we often skip over part A of that scripture, which says, what shall we say about these things? And we even sometimes don't even dig deeper into scripture to really find out what we're actually celebrating. You know, Paul's writing this and saying, like, if God be for us, who can be against us? And he comes to this conclusion because of these things. Well, I realize that if we don't really know what these things are, how can we really stand in the truth that God is for us? So for the next few weeks, next few months, actually, we're going to unpack what it means to live a life in the spirit. And we're going to talk about what these things are. And I believe that if we take a moment by moment, week by week, look at what the scripture says, dig a little bit deeper into it, um, and we find out what these things are, it'll help us uh, live out the testimony that Paul had in Romans 8 and 31 when he said, um, what shall we say to these things if God be for us, which, which tells us, honestly, that there are things uh, that he lists in Romans 8 and 30, 8, uh, for chapter 8, um, that actually show that God is for us, right? That God is actually for our benefit, for our growth, for our, uh, our, our strengthening and our building. And if we don't understand those things, we can't actually live out this life in godliness. So we're going to take a few moments um, each week and look through the scriptures verse by verse and unpack it a little bit just to kind of get some truth into it. We won't go too deep into it, but um, I want to take time to dig through Romans 8 and find out what it means to live a life in the spirit uh, and actually what it means, um, what Paul references when he talks about these things, right? So let's start at verse 1. Verse 1 says this, 8 and 31, 8 and 1, sorry. Um, Paul says, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. End quote, <laughs> right? First verse, let's stop there. Here's one of the things that Paul references in Romans 8 and 31. He says, there is therefore no condemnation to those who belong in Christ Jesus. Number one, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a blessing all in itself. You know, when I think about it, I think we've referenced sometimes condemnation as um, consequence or condemnation as uh, um, some type of punishment or penalty. But if we define uh, condemnation, it's defined as this. Uh, Bishop Google says uh, that condemnation is the expression or very strong disapproval of or 
what is called censure. So when uh, Paul writes here, again, we, we remember one thing, uh, that the Word of God is God. Uh, Holy Spirit inspired, meaning the Holy Spirit actually spoke to Paul as he wrote this. We believe is infallible, so we believe we believe that it's true regardless of who wrote it or wrote, wrote it down. Um, but God spoke this, so what God spoke, He said, "So there is therefore now no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus." There, there are three little key points I want to make sure we bring out this verse. Right, one. There is therefore now no condemnation. Now, no condemnation. I believe that this verse speaks to every single believer in the present tense. Even the Greek, the scripture is in a present tense. It's not talking about past things. It's talking about now, which is a beautiful understanding of the grace of God and how God sees our past sins. The Bible says that he separates us from our sins and he removes them as far as the east is from the west. Why is that important? It's because God is not looking at trying trying to uh, um, bring our past mistakes into our present justification. But I believe that God is trying to ensure that we understand that we are not condemned because of our past things. There is therefore now no condemnation. And you know, the the writer uh, Paul, as he wrote this, he could have actually been talking about himself. You know, in the previous chapter, there was a a chapter seven, uh, there's a moment where he just kind of... um, um, kind of goes off in this tangent about the sinful nature that he's in. And I want to read it to you. Um, If you're ever struggling with sin, um, looking at what Paul says, it's a really good uh, explanation of how Paul uh, sees his sin journey, so to speak, and how God redeems it. But if you want to look at Romans chapter 7, verses 14 through the end of the chapter, um, but Paul says, so the trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, Paul says, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. Some of us feel like that sometimes, where we fall, we do something, um, we, we, we look a little bit too long, we think a little bit the, the, the contrary way, and we believe ourselves, oh, I'm a slave to sin. You know, and we start kind of downplaying ourselves. Not that sin is some type of thing we, we brush off. No, we deal with sin, absolutely. But we start condemning ourselves with our words. So he says, I don't rely, I don't really understand myself, Paul says, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I know that I am doing, that what I'm doing is wrong, hear this, but if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree that the law is good. What is that saying? That's saying if we know that the law, if I'm doing something that's wrong and I know it's wrong, I am comparing that what the law says, with what the law says. So now I have this, this, this understanding because of what the law says and what I am doing. And it's true there. So now I know that I am in sin because of this. Verse 17. So I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. Be careful though. Be careful. Be careful what Paul is saying. I don't want anybody to think that we are now um, some type of uh, lifeless blob being that sin sin is moving us. No, we are we are enticed. Scripture says by our own lust, we we do the things. Paul, remember, he said, "I do these things." It's not the it's me who does it. But you have to understand, it's the sin nature within you. It's the flesh. Whatever you are giving strength to, that is what will come about. Right. Keep going. Verse 18. And I know that nothing good lives in me. That is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Verse 19. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. Verse 20. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is the sin living in me that does it. Verse 21. So here's the principle now that goes into this. There, this is why he this is why I believe Paul started the next chapter with there is no condemnation, because he starts to see now the results of the spirit when it comes to sin. Verse 21, what did he discover? I have discovered this principle of life. That when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love God's law with all my heart. But there is, here we go. Verse 23, but there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. And here he goes, verse 24. Just imagine this. Oh, what a miserable person I am. 
who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? That's that's our proclamation sometimes, right? When we sin, we do something we want to do right. But we can't. We 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 say to ourselves, "I can do this. I can I can break this sin habit. I can I can I can stop watching it. I can stop doing this. I can I can do these things." And we put all the attention on I I I I I. And Paul says, "Oh wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from this body of sin?" And 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 what he's really saying is, Paul. What, what Paul is really saying is, I've realized I cannot do this of my own accord. I realize that I cannot deliver myself from sin. I realize that I can no longer uh, 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 break my own will because it's not me. It's a sinful nature. It's my nature to sin. I realize I can't break that myself. I realize even if I try to put on more willpower, I can't stop going to that website. I realize by myself, I can't stop drinking that drink. I realize by myself, I can't stop doing the sinful things. So what is he saying? He is saying, I am realizing this one thing. I am not able to do it myself. Be careful. There's a lot of... uh, uh, um, hmm. Be careful. There's a lot of... um, uh, reference to uh, humanology and 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 self sufficiency, where we're starting. You're starting to see. I don't want to just put it on pastors, but you're starting to see a lot of influencers and 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 people online telling you you can do it. You got it. Just 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 pull yourself up. You you got this. Tell yourself you can do it. Like this Tony Robbins type of Christianity. You can't. Stop thinking that you can do it yourself. You cannot do it yourself. If you could, what would be the use for Jesus? You can't do it yourself. You can't break the habit yourself. You can't stop the addiction yourself. You can't get away from her. You can't stop receiving his calls yourself. You need a power that is stronger than you. And I'm telling you, this is this is what Paul felt. Paul was like, I've been trying to do this myself. Listen to what he says. When I want to do right, I can't. When I when I when I want to do what's wrong, I don't. You're not talking about someone who doesn't want to do. You're not talking about someone who hasn't put in their mind that they are going to change their life. No, you're talking about he is mentioning himself. He is saying to himself, I'm trying to get free of this, but I can't. Woe is me. I am so miserable, he says in verse 24. Who can free me from this life of death? Because I surely have tried and I cannot. Oh, but he comes to a resolution. Praise God for the resolution. Verse 25. Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Listen, watch this. Don't miss it. The answer is in. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, verse chapter eight, verse one. So there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You will not break free from your addiction yourself, nor will you break free from the sin nature that is that is keeping you bound just because you are in church. No, you have to be in Christ Jesus, because when you were in him, that is when you become free. When you were in him, that's when he can actually start uh, uh, ripping down the walls of sin. That's when he can start uh, uh, building your, 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 your strength and your faith. That's when he can start allowing you to see victory, because you're not going to do it outside of yourself, outside of him. You're not going to do it outside of Christ. Stop believing the lie that you are able to do it yourself. The the, the the extent of your strength should be to pull yourself up and get yourself to Jesus. The extent of your strength should be able to say with your last murmuring voices of your weak self, Jesus, I can't do this. 
I can't do this alone. I can't do this by myself. I don't want to keep trying when I want to do it. I can't. That should be the last strength you take on because it's not your strength. We boasted his strength. It's his strength who is able to bring you to a sinless life. It's his strength that's able to bring you to, 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 to free you from the sin nature that you that you're in. I'm telling you, you can't do it alone. And once you find this out, you will share in the strength that Paul says. Thank God the answer is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So you see, he says, how how it is. In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I am a slave to sin. So he starts off the next chapter, chapter 8, verse 1, with a with no condemnation. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation, no strong disapproval, no censure to those who are in Christ Jesus. Another version says, to those who belong to Christ Jesus. The first part of that was to those who, uh, there is therefore now no condemnation. The second part I want you to see is those who who belong to Christ Jesus. You cannot be free. You will not be free if you do not belong to Christ Jesus. Let me say this again. If you have not given your life to Jesus and surrendered your whole selves to Jesus as a sacrifice, you You will not see freedom. You won't see freedom. My friend, you can't do this on your own. I'm talking to the young man who, young woman, listen, man or woman who was watching porn. I'm I'm talking to the young man who still scrolls at night, TikToks and looking at the females. I'm talking to the young woman who can't seem to stop uh, 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 sharing her number with every other guy who just whispers in her, her ear. I'm talking to the man who who is drinking to numb himself. I'm talking to the woman who is smoking and keeping themselves bound and their mind mixed up. I'm telling you, you will not see freedom in your own strength. You have to give it over to Jesus. If you belong to him, he removes the condemnation. Now, let me say this. Uh, uh, God is a very just God. Don't so, so for those who are believers, please don't believe the lie also that you can just, be, you know, when you, when you come to Christ, you can just sin and, and do whatever. No, 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 no. Don't, don't believe that. Here is the other truth. The other truth is this, that God is a very just God. I got two scriptures for you. Deuteronomy 32 and 4 says that God is a God of faithfulness and without iniquity. Just and upright is he. Second scripture, Psalms 89 and 14. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. God is a very just God. And and watch this, so you know, so you're under so you understand. No condemnation does not mean no consequence. No condemnation does not mean no consequence. It happens. If if God tells me right now, don't put your hand in the fire. And I go put my hand in the fire. It's still going to hurt. That's the consequence of my stupidity. <laughs> because he said, don't do it. And if I do it, it hurts. That's consequence. That's what it is. But God is like, listen, if, if there's still no condemnation to you. It's two different things. You got to realize the difference, right? Paul himself went through, again, I, I suggest you read through chapter seven, right? Especially for those who deal with sin. Let me, if you're dealing with sin in your life, struggling with sin in your life, and you're a believer, I want you to read Romans seven. You can read the whole thing, but read Romans seven, 14 through the end of the chapter, 25. Read how Paul talks about it. And, and especially for those who are trying to do it yourselves. Listen, my brother and my sister, I'm not condemning you. I'm not judging you either. But I will say this. A lot of what we feel and a lot of what we are going through is because we're trying to do it on our own. No, 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 no offense to Tony Robbins. He's a great guy, I believe, I suppose. But when we try to do it ourselves, we are going to make a mistake. And and we're not that good. Let, let, Let me... Let me clarify to us. 
we're not that holy. We're, we're, we're not that strong. We, we, our parameters. Uh, mm. For every person who falls to sin or temptation in their lives, there's probably a, a moment because I don't I don't believe it ever it's ever a just jump in. I, I believe there are moments for every person, man or woman, boy or girl who's been through sin in their life. There's probably a moment in their life where they believed they were strong enough to handle something that they weren't. I can I can account I can recount all the times in my life. When God gave me this revelation and I started just believing it, like, oh, this is not me. I started believing it. I started and looking at the patterns of my life and started realizing, yo, all that crap that I've been through, I can probably trace it, not probably, I can trace it back to some point where I thought I was strong enough to do it myself. Where if I told myself no phone after 9 p.m., if I went to about 9.05, I was okay. If I told myself I need to be in bed by a certain time because my mind starts wondering, I start perverting thoughts in my mind. Not even lust, just perverting thoughts. Like just, and I'm watching the game. So it's a West Coast game. So, you know, they, they start at 10 sometimes. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you. Whenever we start perverting or stretching the parameters and pushing out the parameters, we have done two things. We have, one, shown the enemy that I am not willing to stay within the parameters of my own strength. And two, we have given the enemy an, a, a, a weakened position to attack. I don't know why I'm going this moment, but let me just stay here for a moment. Like, the enemy... In war, your opponent is looking for the weakest point to attack you, not just in time, but also in like location. They're looking for the entry point that is the least bit guarded. And if they can get you, if they can find a portion of your of your estate that is least bit guarded, that, 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 that no sentry is blocking, that that is uh, that they can they can take advantage of if, if if they can find it, they're gonna attack it. They're gonna attack it. And and think about yourself in a, a steel room, right? You're being guarded from the enemy. You're being guarded from the enemy. And all of a sudden, what does the Lord do? All of a sudden, the Lord, oh, what, <clears throat> you've been guarded from the enemy. And, and, and what happens? Well, I can I can stretch out a little bit. So you start to stretch the stretch the borders, stretch the parameters. Yeah. But what you don't realize you're doing, what you see yourself doing, is trying to give yourself more space. Ooh, Holy Spirit. What you see yourself doing is trying to give yourself more space. What the enemy sees you doing is weakening your defenses. Now, that wall doesn't look as strong as it did until you weakened it. Because you're trying to do it on your own self. Because you feel that you're good enough. Three things to remember here. If you don't have parameters or some type of border around your own personal life, get some. Two, if you think you're strong enough to be able to go past those borders because you're, you, you, you've gotten to a certain place in God, every person who has ever fell, fallen has fallen because they have thought they were strong enough or stronger than what they really were. Find me a person and I'll find you that reason. I'll find you that reason. And lastly, be careful. Number three, be very careful of the people who tell you that you can do it. Now, I'm not saying you have some type of disapproval of yourself. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't do that. As a matter of fact, 
What, oh, I got it. I got a bookmark right here. Don't, don't, don't speak disapproval of yourself, or don't speak that you're not good enough, or that God hasn't placed something in you that's strong enough. I'm not talking about what God has given you as task or what God has given you as purpose. Don't, don't do as the scouts did, right? Numbers fourteen. I have it. I, I just happen to have a bookmark. Um, Numbers 14, verse 31, right? The scouts had went out to the land. They came back with a report and grapes, a report and fruit. Uh, that's a whole message right there. They came back with a report and fruit. I want to preach that. My first message somewhere, I'm preaching that. The report and the fruit. Eee. Verse 31, number 14. They, the, the, the men said, we can't go up against them. Caleb, had, Caleb said in the prior verse, uh, we can do it. Man, let's let's go. He said, we can certainly conquer it. But the men said, we can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. Verse 33 says, we even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. And watch what they say about themselves. So I'm not saying don't do what they're, they're about to do. They said, next to them, we feel like grasshoppers. And that's what they feel too. That's what they thought too. Wait, what? Wait a minute. Don't. When you start downplaying yourself, you start to put words in your enemy's mouth. And now, and, and, and now you're believing that they think something of you that they never even said. You have no idea what them people thought of you. But now all of a sudden you're living off this false humility. It's pride, actually. It's pride. But man, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, so I'm not saying... I'm not saying, hear me, I am not saying to live off of a, 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 a lie about yourself or to discredit what God has placed in you. When it comes to your task or what God has placed in you for assignment or calling or purpose, God has given you that gift and that strength to do it. Live in that. But when it comes to fortifying who you are and knowing that the assignment to build you is up to God, you're going to have to start saying, it is not me. I can't do it. God, I'm trying. I, I'm trying to change myself. That That's a you thing. That's, that's a you thing. So God, do what you got to do and give it to God and give it to God. One of the one of these things that that Paul says in Romans 8 and 31. One of these things is knowing that there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, I'm thankful for your grace. I'm thankful for your strength. I'm thankful, Lord, that we have this ability to go to your word and find truth. I'm thankful for the, the writing of Paul in Romans 8 about these things and how we can find um, truths that help us in our everyday life about how to live holy, how to live a life of godliness how to live a life in the spirit. So I pray that we live a life of no condemnation um, and that we live a life that is pleasing towards you. We thank you. We honor you in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you guys so much for joining me for application. I really, really appreciate it. Hey, do me a favor. If you can share this with some people, like and comment below. And there's a link to a survey that I'm going to put on the rest of the uh, videos for the rest of this month. I actually rest of the year um but there's a link below i want you to fill out this survey it'll help us know and understand a couple things about how you guys like to study and also how you like to receive your content so do me a favor fill out the, that survey it should take no more than two minutes if that um but i really appreciate your time again if you're looking at corner over here there'll be a video that youtube wants you to see and i'll see you guys next week peace Thank you.